media availability and internet advertising is a big deal. It's much bigger now as you go through. When you go back and look just even three years ago, when, when first of all, internet advertising passed print advertising for the first time in history as you go through. In those three years that happened since then, you had all kinds of different aspects, but especially COVID hit, and that actually up, up and escalated the whole aspect of all inter internet advertising and also internet ordering as you go through in the process. So really, we're looking at now, this has reached a worldwide audience as you go through. It really is much more accessible. It's easy. You pick up your cell phone, boom, you have something over there. If you get past all the different noise that a consumer has to go to, it's much easier than going through mailing different things and they get it out and they look at it and they throw it away, throw it away, throw it away on this over here, you have a couple of seconds where they're making a decision whether or not to read your ad or not, and boom, it can be very inexpensive. You happen to catch them, you may catch a huge, larger portion in a, in a new market, especially, where it's something new, something unique, and it catches their eye, and it just lets them last a little bit longer before they delete, or maybe they'll actually read it as they go through. It's, a lot of times, it's less heavily regulated as they go through, because it's new, somebody may not catch on to what you're doing in the process, so really, the ads can be interactive, and consumers can choose, I want to receive this, I want to receive this in the process, which, which ones they receive. It's a valuable way to reach specific groups who don't watch a lot of television. That's teenagers and Gen Z as you go through. They hardly ever watch television. They're on their phones, on their computers, much more than any generation in the history of humanity as you go through. The product as you go through, a lot of times, your industrial and luxury products, they really lend themselves to a standardized approach. The luxury ones, you're going to always go for that top market, and then you can scale them down as you go through for lower socioeconomic levels in your marketplace and your demographic as you go through. Sometimes they can also be standardized. Gasoline is sold across the board, and really it goes into the gas tank of a gas filled vehicle all the time. Soft drinks, detergent, cosmetics, those are almost the same as you go through marketing. You may have a higher quality or grade, but everybody uses the products as you go through. Well, pretty much as you go through airline services, if you're flying around the whole world in the process, you, you're appealing to the same group of people. They go for rides and planes as you go through. Sometimes you want to position the product as foreign or local as a major decision. In the United States, we've been selling French wine for, for decades no, not decades, for centuries on a regular basis, and we call it French wine. We have to have champagne. A champagne is nothing but bubbly wine made in a part of France called champagne, and nobody else can put that label on it except the, the, the vineyards in Champagne, France. Well, by the way, that works a big deal, so every time you say champagne, you're asking for a specific French wine as you go through, but it is a general term that we use all the time on a regular basis, and we like it. Italian wines carry a certain certain aspect of it. Once upon a time, I told you before about the aspect of Harley-Davidson cigarettes being sold in Japan. Well, Harley-Davidson doesn't make cigarettes. And by the way, the Japanese like a lot of things American. They like the image of a Harley-Davidson as the engine roars across the great west and the huge plains and the openness and everything else. So they somebody licensed it from Harley-Davidson and they made millions of dollars using something Harley Davidson never made, except they made a lot of money on licensing, and this company made a lot of money selling cigarettes of all things you go through. So sometimes positioning it as foreign is a very positive thing as you go through. A lot of times you have different aspects, brands appeal to certain segments of the market. You may have to sit down and modify the packaging to fit a certain culture as you go through and maybe have a language difference or a language variation because oftentimes when you hit a country, let's say China, you have multiple different languages and you're better off pitching it in the language that you're selling it into in that region of the country as you go through, instead of just using Mandarin Chinese, get specific and, and, and get down more granular and focus in on that specific market you're going after in that one city, what's the most common language spoken there as you go through. Global advertising standardization is really good on digital because you can sit there and capture people. Sometimes people are intrigued by the aspect of something different than their own locale where they're at as you go through. Personal selling, no matter what happens, 
It is always popular. It will always be popular. It is much more intensive, labor intensive. So it costs more. So there's a tendency to sit down and focus in on, on luxury items in developed countries, but it's used a lot in developing countries because of the fact that in developing countries, if they're going to buy this product, $20 may not sound like much in a place like the United States, but $20 can be a big portion of somebody's income in a developing country or lower in income country as you go through. The internet is really helpful by sort of broadcasting the message of the image of your company out there on a regular basis, and then you reach down and, and deal with them on a personal basis basis, sit down there and have the two working hand in hand as you go through. Personal selling is always uh, and always will be part of the aspect of marketing as you go through. So sales promotions, there's all the different things. They all work. The standard point of purchase display, contest, premiums, trade show exhibit, celebrity hands promotion. Hello, I'm Dr. McGay. Over here, I use this cell phone over here. I don't think it's going to be that popular. I'm not tall enough to play basketball, and I haven't played in the NFL at all. So therefore, maybe my celebrity enhanced promotion is not going to work all that well. Oh, well, I'll hire somebody else to do my pitch for me. Maybe that'll work for pushing my brand. Money off offers, coupons, cultural constraints can be considered as well as you go through. Here is an area I really want you to pay attention to, public relations. It seems like no big deal, but let me make fun of one company that I do on a regular basis because they have hokey, corny, cheap advertising. SoCal Honda dealers. Now, I'm broadcasting this from Southern California, but that being said, SoCal, they've had this promotional campaign going on for a number of years over here. They have sales staff dressed in light blue Honda shirts, and they help out with simple things. We're going to sit down there and invest in this playground. And they sit down there and they go through, they remove all the sand, all the dirt, and they replace it with a rubberized texture. When kids fall off the stuff or jump off the stuff, it falls into a pile of easy soft foam and they don't get injured in the process. It costs Honda $27,000 to refurbish this playground over here. Normally, if they sat down there and had a normal ad, they'd spend $250,000, but because they have no payment for the staff, they have minimal payment for the actual material involved, they may get by with $70,000. They save huge amounts of money in creating it, but guess what? It's been going on for a number of years because we like it. it. If it wasn't working, they wouldn't be doing it, but they're doing it because the public likes the aspect of a company, a for-profit company, doing something with its money to help the community that is buying their product. This is a big deal, and pay attention to it, not just in the U.S., Believe it or not, the Canadians like it too. And guess what? The Chinese like it too. The Japanese like it. The Saudis like it. The French like it. Everybody likes to have a company that responds and takes care of the people purchasing their product, purchasing their service. It works. It works. Try it and see what happens as you go through. During times of public criticism, sometimes this will help you in the aspect of it, of you being the brand that serves the community on a regular basis. Sometimes older styles work best. Person to person really is effective and it will be no matter what happens as long as there's human beings on planet Earth. Digital marketing can really be a lot of, very effective for distance and especially for generational differences, especially seeing the millennials, the Gen Z, and the upcoming generations as you, as you go through. And public relations really can help you do a good job at penetrating new and different markets because people have a respect for those companies that take care of the community they work in. Take care.